Coming up, it's the Dave's Retro Video Lab Grab Bag Edition. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another edition of Dave's Retro Video Lab, the show where I buy old video cameras from the internet, I bring them back here to my lab, and I fire them up to see if they still work after all these years. So, uh, my crew said, hey Dave, uh, you need to keep pumping out episodes of Dave's Retro Video Lab so I can get more clicks and views and likes and all this other BS and, uh, well, I'm a busy guy. So they said, well, you know, we only have one episode and maybe we need two. <laughs> so I, I guess, yeah, maybe that was probably a good idea. So we came up with this uh, grab bag idea where I would just grab a camera from the back, bring it up here, and we would test it out and learn about it together. Um, I probably bought this camera months, maybe even years ago, uh, and I just probably looked at it real quick, opened up the box, looked at it, and then just threw it in the back. I just didn't have any time. So you and I are going to learn together uh, more about <laughs> our grab bag camera. So let me grab it. All right, there is today's grab bag camera. It's a Panasonic camera. Um, it says it's the Digital 5000, but I think that's like a line of cameras. I don't think that's the actual model number. We'll get to the model number in a minute. But just taking a quick look at this camera, this is not your everyday consumer camera, probably. I would have to say this is a, a you know, a prosumer, industrial grade, maybe a corporate uh, camera used uh, for uh, corporate events. Pretty neat camera, though. I mean, gosh, look at the size of that lens. Here, let me spin it around and just do this. Like, that's a big honking lens, <laughs> but that's what makes it so cool, uh, you know, and that's probably one of the reasons uh, why I bought this camera. It looks professional, even though it probably really isn't, but it does look really cool, and it's not like your typical little tiny video camera, like maybe that Canon back there or whatever. It's, this is a honking cool camera. So, uh, let's see, what is the model number? It is a Panasonic WV3260, so a 3260 camera made in 1988. Uh, I'll look up the price and I'll put it on a little lower third on the bottom. I'd be willing to bet, and this is a guess, this is a guess, I don't know for sure. I'd be willing to bet this camera probably in 1988 was around, I'm going to guess, probably about two grand, maybe 2000 bucks, maybe $1,700. I'm sure my editor will find out and put it on the bottom of the screen there and we'll all discover together whether I was right or wrong. Uh, but. For those of you uh, who are sort of new to all this, and uh, you youngsters, um, this is not a camcorder. This is a camera. You still had to carry around a uh, VTR pack uh, with the video cassette, which probably weighed like, I don't know, seven or eight pounds, whatever. And then you still had to lug this thing around. And how that would work is you'd cock yes, this thing back. All right. And this is how you would log this camera around. Uh, you know, I have to say, it is not terribly heavy. It's pretty lightweight. I'm guessing it's a CCD camera, but I'm not sure. I mean, it came out in 1988, so CCDs were out by 85, I guess. So chances are it probably has um, a CCD. Uh, so what do we have? We have a little trap door up here. What's up there? Um, oh, look at that. So in there, I think we have some camera calibration, uh, little thingies in there you can tweak. Um, take a look at that. Uh, up here, I think we just have typical lens stuff. Now down here, let's see if we can see that, hold on. Down there, uh, I believe there is a, a character generator of sorts, but I think it might be for like something simple like a time date stamp. Uh, though, oh, one thing I did see, is, uh, which I thought was kind of neat, is right up here, let's see if I could turn that around in the light, there we go, right mm -hmm. there uh, is a port for a character generator. So that might have been kind of cool if there was like a character generator accessory that you could plug in uh, there. Uh, one interesting thing, and I'm not sure exactly what this is, but there is this little doodad uh, that came with the camera 
Here, let me put it towards camera two. Um, there is, maybe I'll put it over here. There we go. So uh, there's this little doodad that came with the camera. I am not sure exactly what it's for. Now, when I read what it says, it says to prevent incorrect color reproduction, this ATW sensor should be used only with the camera bearing the same serial number. So uh, if you look, there is a little serial number up there. So this went with the camera. Now later on, I will turn this on uh, and I have a chip chart or a color chart off to the side and we'll see if this thing still works. I know I am dying to find out. I'm sure you are too. But let's just take this and spin it around just a little bit longer. Um, really fun. I mean, this, this to me is the neat side of the camera. Uh, I mean, I can't wait to turn this on. This is going to be really fun. Um, what, do we have anything special in the back? No, just uh, uh, we have things here to, for a shoulder strap, right? Oh, and then with the camera's connectivity, uh, is it back here? Yeah. Ah, that is one thing. Where is it? Right there. So uh, that's where you plug in the camera cable. Oh, and that is one thing, too, about this camera and a bunch of cameras um, that I guess later on, maybe it was a Matsushita or a Panasonic, same thing, I guess, but... They started using these little camera cables or uh, connectors. Uh, try finding them. It's a pain in the ass. If the camera doesn't come with one, then you get to hunt one down on eBay. But this cable actually came with the camera, which was good. Uh, I have a standard power supply that I'll bolt onto this and then we'll fire this thing up and we'll check it out. So stand by, we'll be right back. Okay, now the moment you have been waiting for. I've uh, hooked up the Panasonic, was it a 3260? I don't even remember, but whatever it is, I've uh, hooked up the power cable to my trusty, rusty, uh, where we go, RCA power supply. So we're all set there. Uh, the RCA cables uh, run into this AV uh, selector box. Uh, and in just a few button presses, we'll see uh, together if uh, this thing still works after all these years. So uh, what I will do first is hit the power supply. Good. And I'm going to take the camera and put it into there. Let's see if we got anything. Oh, there it goes. Good, good, good. I think we've got something. Here we go. And boom. Look at that. Uh, hey, it still works. Uh, the colors look pretty good. Let me zoom in. All right, and just rack my focus. Here, and I'll hold that just right there. Do we have that on that camera? Great, camera three has it. I don't know if my, uh, if my camera three is doing it justice, but to the naked eye and the monitor, uh, the colors look all right. I'm just gonna widen out. I'm gonna see the white card for a moment. How does that look? Okay, it looks okay on uh, camera three. Uh, let me see, is there an automatic white balance here? Let's see. Ooh, that didn't look good. Something happened. There we go. It's trying to get a white balance. And, okay, let me just zoom in here a little bit. All right, not bad. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, I don't typically spend a lot of money on these cameras. Um, I try not to spend maybe more than $30, $40 a camera. And that's if I know if it works. And, you know, with a lot of people out there, you know, they say as is or, oh, it works, but you never know. But in this case, I lucked out, and this is a beautiful camera, uh, definitely uh, one that I'm glad that I have in my collection. Now what I want to do is uh, we'll slap it on a tripod, aim it towards me, and uh, we'll see what I look like on our 32-year-old friend here. We'll be right back. Okay, here I am back in 1988. Um, it's awfully hard to tell if the camera is set up properly or we're just used to looking at 4K cameras. Um, I'm going to err on the side of that I didn't set it up right, but uh, there it is. It looks okay. I think I could probably be uh, in focus a little bit better, um, but that's about it. So I want to thank you so much for watching Dave's Retro Video Lab. I'm Dave the Lab Tech, and tune in next time when we grab another camera and check it out. Take care. <laughs>